Derek Meyer, folks, is a uh, gospel singer, rising star, but he's also an entrepreneur. We had a great discussion about that when I was recently in Los Angeles. I remember growing up and watching uh, Puffy, Master P, um, these guys start these movements just from their city and really just taking ownership. And I feel like, especially for African-American male, it's really important for us to own things. So for me, what I wanted to do was Number one was I want to leave something to my children. Like I want to leave a legacy. I want my people to, um, my, my sons, I have two sons, Nolan and Zane, and I want them to say, you know, man, my dad owns something and, and, and this is a, a legacy for them to step into. But then at the same time too, I also feel like it's a great opportunity for me to be able to give back. So I have tons of talented artists. I got uh, four talented artists on my roster and it's just a blessing really to be able to work with them. And hopefully they can avoid some of the pitfalls that I've made on the way up. So I really feel like it's, it's, it's dual fold. So we talk about those pitfalls. I mean, is it what just uh, just the business side of the business? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I mean, you hear all the horror stories and, and especially music as far as and I think much of that there's always a little truth on both sides. And most of the time it's like the label did this artist dirty. But oftentimes it's also the artist being an educator. I mean, you give an artist in advance that comes from, you know, wherever a lot of us come from very and they're often young, so they don't really know what to do with the money. So guys don't know, hey, you're going out eating at the best restaurants in the city. That goes against your budget. So me as an artist and, and also as a uh, as an entrepreneur, I try to tell my artists, like, hey, man, uh, you know, this is going against your budget and really try to help them, like, um, understand as far as taxes, paying Uncle Sam, and making sure that I want them to, if they were to leave our label tomorrow, they would leave being better men. Like, I really look at it like that. So what was a turning point for you when you said, you know what, I, I, I need to be the talent and the CEO? Man. So I went to school actually at uh, Middle Tennessee State uh, University for music business. Uh, it's the number one music business school in the country. And I remember being signed to Reach Records, which was uh, Lecrae's label. I don't know if you know who Lecrae mm -hmm. is, but he's an amazing talent mentor of mine. And, and I was there and I was enjoying it. And I signed a two album deal, but I remember him telling me saying, hey man, like I want to sign this deal so you can be an owner, so you can do this for yourself. And I got to the end of the deal. And it was, I had an option. I could, we could try to renegotiate to try to see how far we could go or we could move on. And um, I just really felt like it was time for me to really step into, because I had creative vision and um, artistry and ideas that I really felt like were really important. And I didn't feel like I could execute them as well in that system. So uh, God presented the opportunity for me to step out. I finished my two album deal. and. And I just was like, okay, I'm gonna jump. Like, you remember that Steve Harvey video where he talks about jumping? It was really just jumping. And um, from there, I don't think I realized how hard it would be. <laughs> but uh, God is, I mean, today, I mean, this week we found out that uh, my uh, single, Change the World, it was number one on the CHR charts, um, Christian Hit Radio. So that's been cool. And, you know, I've been able to do records with BJ the Chicago Kid and Chris Ed Michelle and different people. So it's been really cool just. You know, watching how, uh, watching God do His thing. You know, I ask all song songwriters this, uh, and that is uh, their process. Um, John Legend said, for him, it's very structured mm -hmm. in terms of when he writes music. Other folks, uh, uh, Will Downing talked about uh, moments of inspiration. So, mm -hmm. for you, uh, what is your process? Consistency. I treat music creation like a, a like a forty hour a week job. And I, I, I put it and I say, I'm just gonna show up every day. And so when I'm in that moment, usually it's, it's prob inspiration comes from everything. I could drop my, cause I'm also a producer. So I could drop my keys on the desk and say, oh, that'd be a great shaker and start there. And then that would uh, turn into a song or, you know, where a lot of creatives create is in the shower where you get to thinking and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna run down and, and, and cut this vocal. So uh, most of the time it's really consistency is what I, I preach to all artists, I think, to get better at your craft and to have a high output, it's just showing up every day and making time for it. You talked about where uh, you are with, uh, uh, with your hit single. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the sixth album. Mm -hmm. And so um, why did you name this album what you named it? 
and, and and take take me through what is the meaning of it because each I mean all artists say you know each album there's a meaning behind it yes uh, so I named the album Reflection because I feel in today's world especially with social media and especially I mean I just pressure as just a human individual oftentimes we can look in the mirror and not like what we see and I think because there's so much like when you look on social media it's like everyone's highlight reel and we want our whole life to look like someone else's highlight reel, I think we always forget that, you know, I, in my opinion, that God has made us all with great talents. You know, like, you're, you're an, a, an amazing person, but God made me different from you, and that's the beauty of what we get to have here, is someone's gonna grab, grab and grow from you, and they're gonna grab and grow from me. So what I wanted to do was, in, in this atmosphere, I thought it was really important for people to understand, like, you're, you're, God has made you great. Like he has made you, literally the Bible says, we're made in the image of God. So we're literally a reflection of him on earth. So for me, that's what made the album. That's the glue that holds the whole album together is for people to know, like you were made, not just, like you weren't an accident. You were made with greatness in you. So the, uh, the single changed the world. That's where a lot of that was birthed. I remember. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37 year old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. <laughs> we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.